In spring 2010, I met Paul through a cellist friend. Touched by his artistic independence and energy, I decided soon after to do a film about the man who met Francis Bacon, sold the sculptor to Roald Dahl at the age of 24, and dedicated all his life to art in its purest meaning. Paul Riley, Paul Eugene Riley actually. I, I live in Brixton and my studio is in Clapham. I've been an artist since I was 16. I left school because I was rubbish at school. I was in Coventry this way, which is in Coventry, industrial town, okay, 1940s to 50s, yeah. I was born in the war and uh, they, my father was a mechanic, my grandfather, my brothers, my uncles and aunts, they're all in the factories, the car factories, the aeroplane factories. And uh, when I was 15 or something, and I wasn't very good at school, because, you know. And uh, they said, oh, factory for you, Paul. <laughs> and uh, my grandfather, who used to live with us, said, you can do anything you like, Paul. Remember that. You don't have to do what other people tell you is the right thing to do. And I took that on heart, and I, and I could draw a little bit. You know, I used to, my mother bought me paint by numbers, you know, and that, that taught me a little bit about painting, actually. And, uh, but then they said, well, you could try and get into art school. I was 16, I had no qualifications, no GCs, nothing. And uh, I did some drawings out of a book. I copied some drawings. They were Leonardo da Vinci. I didn't know at the time, but they, I just copied them. And I, I had an interview with the, uh, the principal of the art school, and I went along and he said, we'll give you a year's trial and see how you get on. Immediately I got to art school, I loved it. I just, I, I loved painting, drawing, there were people there who enthusiasm me. I started to learn, immediately. I started to develop and learn. And when I was 17, I remember distinctly doing one painting. And what I did, I walked along the canal, the Coventry Canal, industrial landscape. And I did some drawings of a situation, a bridge, and uh, just some simple drawings. And I went back home and I made this painting. And I thought, ah, this is an okay painting. I didn't think much about it. I just painted it how I felt I should. And then I took it into the art school and there were all these professors there and they were saying, this is a fantastic painting. I'm going, is it? I said, yeah, this is a really good painting. And I thought, oh, they're having me on, but actually, The other students came in with their work and they were, they were saying, no, this is no good, this is no good. And they kept coming back to mine and saying, this is a good paint. It gave me such a, a boost uh, for my confidence. From that, point, from that point onwards, I've decided that's really what I want to do. That's all I want to do ever, is paint and make sculptures. Because I, I, I used to make, when I was a kid, I used to make models too. So that made me into a sculptor a little. I used to make airplanes and cars and stuff. And that made me into a sculptor as well. And so I was, I was at art school for, I don't know, seven, eight years. I was at Coventry for five years, and then I came to London, I got into the university without any GCs, no qualifications, but I got into London University, London College University. And I was there for two years, I did a postgraduate, and developed my work, and since then, that's all I've ever done. I've taught in colleges and stuff, but the main thing is, my main project has always been, I go to my studio every day, And uh, I'm working on several pieces of work all the time, making paintings, just exploring ideas. I, I've got no idea what I'm going to do tomorrow. I just kind of go in and I explore the realms of colour and shape and form and tone and all these things which make up, and ideas which make up a piece of art. And it's not like I've got any special talent. It's, I'll tell you what my talent is, is my desire. That's my talent. I, my, the reason I do it, you know, it comes from my heart. It comes from my gut. That's, that's why I like to do it. There's no other reason. I mean, you know, I, it, it, people say, oh, he's, he's a genius. You know, that person's got it you know, in their blood or, you know. No, 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 no. Talent comes from hard work, from doing it, from enjoying it. 
Hard work is enjoyment. You know, that's what I find. These are, these are just some examples. They're not actually very typical, but they're just some ideas about, I remember the uh, fireworks uh, 2000 on the Thames, I was there, I don't know if anybody else was there, they had the, you know, the Millennium, they had the big firework display. So I thought I'd do some firework paintings, and that's Blackfriars Bridge. That's House of Parliament. And I think that's, that's, that's uh, St Paul's there, I don't know what that bridge is, probably London Bridge or something like that. So I was just experimenting with material, really, and how you can scratch through and create different effects with paint and stuff. And that's a bonfire. I've done a whole, I've done a lot of those. Because what happens is people see them and they want one, so I do another one. You know, so I do another one, so you know, because they, 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 I can sell them. And that's how I try. I try and make my money by selling my work, obviously. And that my work is sold through my get through my studio and through my website as well. <laughs> I think he's a um, he's very uh, sensitive person, I mean he's a talented artist, definitely. He never criticised mm -hmm. anyone, I don't think I ever heard him criticise someone, mm -hmm. you know, saying something nasty about someone. So he's uh, kind, I think he's kind. Yeah. So what are we listening to? Duke, Duke Brothers. Duke Brothers. Brixton Band. So from here? Yeah. There's no signal. I only turn it on a couple of minutes a day. It really doesn't. Is there something there? Okay, so you, what do you think about the state of art nowadays, like the, the situation? Well, I think it's pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. There's some good stuff around, yeah. I go to shows quite a lot and uh, I see some very good stuff. Uh, one comment is I'd like to make is that uh, I think uh, there's a lot, you see a lot too much stuff of, of the established people. They seem to show the same people all the time. Well, I mean, you see, you know, very, I don't want to name anybody, but various. Uh, there's quite a few uh, top artists, in other words, artists who are making a living out of it. And they're the people you see all the time being promoted by major galleries. It's a risk factor to show people who are not quite so well known or established. And uh, the galleries don't seem to want to do this. He's never been interested in the financial, so he's got like more... Um Maybe, um, you know, he's always done what he wanted to do, I guess. Wanted to do, like having the freedom to do what he wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. I've not had a great relationship with galleries, although I do, I mean, there's a few people who are run galleries who I know and help me out and try and help me out and stuff. Uh, try and find me commission work and things like that. Um, but I, can't, I, see, I try to avoid them. I try to do my own dealings or sell work, etc., through my studio and through personal contacts, through my website and stuff like that, rather than go through commercial galleries. I think he got disappointed. I think he got disappointed with the industry. I think mm. that's what it is, if you can call it an industry. I mean, it is an industry. But, uh, yeah, I think that's what happened to him. You know, he got disappointed and he was 
um, he, he, you know, he believed in something and he didn't happen to him. Maybe he should ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I've always has been in, very much into music and uh, the correlation between music and art and uh, the relationship between the two. Uh, music is very fluid, it's, it, it's, it's non-objective, it's in the air and it's gone. It's, like a kind of, it's in the moment, if you like. In a, way, uh, in a way, trying to make the art a little bit like this, and um, particularly the sculptures, not some, the paintings, yes, as well, but the paintings are sometimes to do with other things. But the sculptures, definitely, I try and make them as musical as possible. So the, the solids and the spaces are like solid notes, and the spaces are like spaces in music. So you can read the sculpture like a melody. The forms are uh, fluidly balanced on each other, and the way that they can slide off each other the way that you can move around a sculpture to find different things which are not necessarily apparent are a surprise. Uh, this is a little poem that kind of encapsulates uh, what I feel about life. Step lightly through your life and listen to the heart whisper sweet things of love. 